<clears throat> Hello everyone, this is Adam Senoretta from Be As Strong As You Look. Uh, today I am going to go over an article that I wrote that I am still in the process of formatting so I could publish it to a few websites and get this information out to you. But I figured I will go over some things that people encounter when they uh, and have trouble with uh, when they do the deadlift. So this will be a little bit of trouble uh, shooting. Um, one question that I just was recently asked was by somebody that, who said that their back hurts while they deadlift. Uh, what can they do instead of deadlifting? Well, <clears throat> my immediate response and would be different from most people, whereas your regular trainers or would uh, look at this question, and what they do immediately is start to look for exercises that they can give to their client that will take place of the deadlift. Whereas an experienced coach, such as myself and many others, um, when they hear the question, the first thing that they do is begin to look at the problem of, well, the deadlift didn't do anything wrong to you. Um, chances are you're doing the deadlift wrong, and that's what's hurting your back. So don't blame the deadlift. Blame the fact that you're not willing to put in the work to correct this and build up proper movement patterns. Uh, which movement patterns are basically a map um, that your brain will have for your body. So your brain will tell your body what to do. Now, if you have the wrong map or no map at all, how do you expect to get to where you want to be on that movement? So with that being said, some of the things that I have uh, noticed is that most people... Um, can either look at the deadlift as, as a very simple movement, such as uh, you bend down, grab the bar, and lift it off the floor. That's all fine and good, but then you come in contact with people that have injuries, such as myself, uh, which can be a limiting factor, and over time have to change your style of your deadlift to maximize your results. Now. Recently, I have had a problem with my knee, severe problem with my knee. So that completely changed my deadlift. Uh, it, because of the knee pain, I could not put too much pressure on the knee. So to compensate for this, my hips were a lot higher, which in turn would put my leverages not in such optimum positioning and cause me to have my backside shoot up too high before the bar even lift, left the ground. And with doing that, it puts a lot of strain on my lower back. Now, what I'm gonna do to help you correct that is go over a few things that might help you get into a better position. So if you do have a knee problem, such as myself, uh, it can generate from something like tight ankles. I currently have tight ankles and Although I do mobility drills and anything that I can to increase the mobility in my ankles to allow me to get down into a proper position to do the deadlift. But because of the problems with the ankle, they have gave, given me a knee problem as well. So the knee problem will make me do more of a deadlift where my hips are high, it looks similar to a stiff leg deadlift and brings my back into the equation way too much. When you do more of a conventional deadlift or a powerlifting deadlift, uh, it is important to be able to get down low and be able to flex that bar, take the slack out of it, make sure that that's tight. And when you pull, you're gonna pull straight up using a lot of your upper body getting that weight to your knee line. And once you get to the knee line, a lot of people do not have the glute activation, flexibility in their hips, or even the know-how to lock out with thrusting the hips forward. So what they do is they rely on their lower back and that's how people get injured doing that. So again, with that being said, 
what we will do right now is just um, go over a few things that can help correct this. Um, if your problem is like mine, you might have a knee injury or tight ankles. Uh, to solve the tight ankles temporarily, slightly angle your toes out. To uh, a knee problem, you may have to learn how to do more of a stiff-legged deadlift uh, in the meantime until your knee is able to heal. Um, another problem that I have had myself in the past is the problem of hitching. Hitching is when you do the deadlift and you get to a certain point once you pass the knees, it, your body must rely on strong glutes and strong hip mechanics uh, of thrusting the pelvis forward. And a lot of the times this does not happen. And in turn, the person will use way more lower back than is needed. So just to uh, give you an idea of what that would look like, you just bear with me. I hope I can set this up properly. So say we are here, and you go for your deadlift. When you deadlift, you want to make sure that you are aligned so that your shoulder blades are going to be directly over the bar. Okay. So if you went to go lift something, there is no way you're going to lift this bar off the ground without excess mo uh, movement here. When you do a movement, it should be a straight up and down thing. So, uh, this is more of a stiff leg where the shins are going to be parallel, but a conventional deadlift or one that's going to maximize your strength, you want to set up and dip your knees forward so that the bar is placed right up against the shins, your shoulders are going to be over the bar here. Okay, so this is a good position for me. Uh, everybody's going to be different to limb length torso ratio. So what you want to do now is grab this bar, okay? I have a technique where I start up here and I'll dip into the bar and it'll rip up. That's taken me years to get down and that will give me some momentum and more speed in my deadlift. But for this video's sake, I'm gonna go over, again, the, the process of pulling, okay? So you get your setup. Make sure that you're set up well. You're going to want to set up where the bar is pretty much over the toes so that you're able to push your shins into the bar so it's touched up against the bar. You pull your shoulders back nice and tight. It's going to be inevitable on a max lift that your shoulders are going to round. Do not be afraid of this. Now, a rounded posture here will help you in the long run for several reasons I'll get into. Now, when you pull the bar, what you want to do is flex that bar first, take the slack out of it. You want to pull hard without the plates leaving the ground. So this is going to tighten everything up. It will tighten all the proper muscles that need to be fired. So by pulling this bar here, it, you should pull leading with the upper body. By leading with the upper body, this is going to keep your hips down and without them shooting up and putting a lot of pressure on the low back. So when you pull, you're pulling up to about the, shit, the knee light, uh, height here. And once you get to here, the next motion should be thrusting of your hips forward to full lockout so your glutes are tight, okay? And from here, you want a straight posture, nice, narrow, rigid posture, good structural integrity, okay? So now you're locked out tight without arching here. This is a very bad thing to do to finish a lift. If you have to do that, main thing is you have no glute function whatsoever. Same thing goes for hitching. Hitching will look like this. You'll get the bar to the knees. Once you start to pull up, you get stuck because you can't thrust your hips forward. So now what do you do here? You start jerking the bar like this and very painful to the back. And in a competition, you will be red lighted. So there's really no benefit to hitching. If you feel that you're starting to hitch, drop the weight and start over. Go back to the drawing board. Now, with Covering those issues with the glute uh, dysfunctions. Um, another one is uh, your grip and grip strength. Your deadlift is only going to be as strong as your grip. If you can't hold on to the bar, lift will never count. Now, 
uh, one other thing that I wanted to touch before we get into anything else is the only thing that will fix your deadlift is going back to the basics and redefining your technique. You could do as many exercises as you want, but when it comes to such a man-making exercise as ripping a quarter ton off the ground, you don't do that by accident. You do that because not only do you have technique, your technique could actually suck. But just because you have that drive, that desire, that mindset to always get better, that is more important than anything else. If you approach the bar like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do this, and then, you know, your girl looks over at you like, you know, man up, you pussy, and you're like, you know what, you're right. So, boom, mindset changes. I'm going to fucking destroy this. I am going to rip this bar off the ground. And approaching the bar with that, you are 10 times more likely to complete that lift. Now, if you don't complete that lift and you look like a bitch in front of your girl, then send your girl over to me and maybe she could be a real man, you know? But just saying, just saying. Um, so always have that in your mind, that you want to be the best man possible for your woman, not just in the gym, but outside of the gym. You want to make her feel that she can be safe, she can be protected by you, the man. So... The standard of man nowadays is a little embarrassing to the other men in this generation that are real men. A real man is defined by his character. His character is defined by his integrity. His ability to do what he needs to do, even when nobody is watching. When the cameras are off, when the Instagram fans are not there, and you're sitting at home depressed because things aren't going your way, and you have the option to go to the gym or put in some work to get better. And you choose not to because you're like, hey, nobody's around. Somebody's always around. You're around. You do this for you. You do this for nobody else. If anybody else tells you that you can't do it, use that. I love that. I love when somebody says, you're done, Adam. You can't do this. You're washed up. This and that. And then you know what I do? I come back. I kick the shit out of them, and I win. There were so many people that thought that I was on, I was done, I was not coming back. But before I even decided to come back, I needed to rebuild this, your mindset. So that's where my coaching comes in. I don't just coach your nutrition, your, your weight training, your cardio, but this is a full mindset.